Okay. Hi, Dr. Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine. Welcome to our video series. This video is intended for students uh, and parents who are interested, but specifically this is for my grad students. Um, but certainly parents are more than welcome to see this. Today what we're going to talk about is immune response and the amnestic immune response and, and what happens when we vaccinate patients and, or for that matter when you're exposed to disease and why we do what we do to prevent disease. Uh, so some basic immunology. We're going to leave out some of the bigger details or some of the smaller details but we're going to look at some of the, the most basic processes here. Uh, if you're interested in doing a rotation with us, give us a call at 775-359-7111. If I'm not on staff at your university, that can probably be arranged. Um, and arranged pretty easily. So, the amnestic immune response. When we look at immune titers, okay, I will see how well this comes up. So if we put on the y-axis your immune titers, when you receive your first exposure to an antigen, whether that's a vaccine, an allergen that you eat or are injected with from a, a bee sting, or a uh, virus that you're exposed to, whether that's vaccination or you caught a cold, the first thing that happens is we get a big bump of IgM okay, and a small bump of IgG. Is that a G? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I shouldn't have drawn it this way because the IgG never goes away. Okay? And over time, it stays there. When you get re exposed, you get another bump of IgM just like you did the first time. So this is your re exposure point. But that IgG, which was baseline, goes way up. And it goes up very fast. And actually, I'm not drawing this quite right, because it'll actually go up faster than the IgM mm -hmm. peak does in the amnestic response. This is why we give booster doses of vaccines. Okay, With the first response, you do typically get... Um, memory, but we want to get the higher titer and we want to get this response so that when you now are exposed to wild type measles, you get an amnestic response instead of this kind of a response. And it's IgG. Looking at your um, basic immunology, also realize that IgM tends to be less specific because it's designed to attack a broader range of antigens or of epitopes. Whereas your IgG is very specific, has very high affinity. This one binds complement as well. And by binding complement, you increase your ability for cytotoxic destruction. IgG calls in T cells as well, so it's involved in increasing the immune response. And by calling in T cells, you then increase your cytokine cascade and bring the rest of the immune cascade into effect. You don't get that with IgM. So this is the goal of boosters. Um, and specifically, the, 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 where this conversation came from with my student today was looking at the uh, conjugated vaccines, and specifically MCV4 conjugate. Menvio um, and um, Menactra. And, you know, why do we give a second dose? And we give the first dose at 11 years of age, we give the second dose at 16 years of age, and what happens when you're 23 years old and you're in the army and you're exposed? Well, and, and gee, aren't you going to be in trouble? Because, you know, we said we have to give a second dose five years after that. Why don't we give another one at, 
uh, 16 plus 5 would be 21 years of age. And the answer is because from current research, we're seeing that your titers stay up. They don't fall off. And you now have a really good amnestic response so that if you are challenged at 21 years of age with wild type um, meningococcus, your response is going to look like this. Again, real high peak, and you already have circulating antibodies. So I, does this answer your question, student in the background? Okay. Um, so that's why we do what we do and what we certainly hope happens with the immune system. Now, we can run into some problems because let's say at age 18 you develop leukemia and we ablate your immune system. We can eliminate that amnestic response. And so patients who've had leukemia uh, and have had chemotherapy, even without having bone marrow transplant, have to be revaccinated for a whole slew of things, uh, regardless of their age. And specifically here, we're looking at a vaccine that we don't give till 11 months of age or 11 years of age. But that's true for tetanus and polio that we give it two, four, and six months for infants. You know, you have a two-year-old with leukemia. You got to revaccinate them because you've bladed this immune response. You've killed off a lot of those memory cells. Um, Remember, specifically, we're talking about memory B cells, okay, your plasma cells. Any questions on this topic, student, in the background? Because you represent everybody who's going to watch this video in the future. Okay, so this is Dr. Windish. I hope this has been enlightening for you. If we can be of any assistance here, give us a call at 359-7111. That's area code 775. We'll see you next time.